Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that's very worried about this COVID pandemic. I mean, we know that in about nine months we're going to have a baby boom, and then in 2033 we'll have to deal with the quarantines. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Back to the Future, Dice Through Time from Ravensburger. In Back to the Future Dice Through Time from Ravensburger, two to four players are going to go ahead and uh, take on the roles of uh, Marty as they, in various times, as he tries to put the timeline to rights. Now, each player is going to have their own little colored DeLorean. They're going to start in a different time, either 1885, 1955, 1985, or 2015. The game board highlights these years, different locations from those years that were from the films. You're also going to have a number of item cards that are placed next to each of those uh, years, depending on uh, player count. And then you're also going to have a number of uh, event cards that will be shuffled that will be put uh, on the board as well. Each player will have their own individual player board, which will have space for some items to carry, as well as place where you can spend your dice. You'll also have your very own color-coded dice. Now what's going to happen is the very first thing you do every year is you draw the uh, event cards. You draw a number of event cards. You're going to go ahead and then place those event cards onto specific locations in specific years, and these will be uh, events that you will have to kind of overcome in order to win the game. After you've placed all these, these event cards on the locations, you roll the die, and the die have a number of symbols on them. A flux capacitor allows you to move to any, lo any year in the same location. The forward uh, symbol, that allows you to move to any location within your current year. The fist allows you to beat Biff Tannen and force him into an adjacent space in the same year. Lightning allows you to re-roll any unspent tokens you might have. A dog brown allows you to remove two paradox tokens from the board. And the wrench is kind of a wild dice symbol. Now on your turn, you're going to be using those die to get rid of those location cards, moving to locations and times with those location cards, and then spending the die that match the symbols on the, lo on the event cards rather, to, in order to get rid of those event cards and clear the location. Now when you clear a location, meaning there are no more event cards there, you can go ahead and take an item card. You can only carry up to two item cards on your player board. Uh, you go ahead, you take that to a specific timeline and uh, location in that timeline, and it, if, if that area is clear, you can go ahead and drop off the item, return it, goes off the board, and in that case you will be rewarded. The reward you get is an Einstein token. Einstein tokens are little tokens you can put off to the side of the board that are going to give uh, special abilities to anybody that wants to use them so that they can, instead of if they haven't rolled the right dice, they can spend one of those to do the things they need to do. There's also a rippling dice effect. Essentially, you can place one of your die in a timeline, and any subsequent timeline, meaning chronologically any that come after that timeline, if somebody's on that same location, they can use that die uh, for themselves in order to fulfill whatever objective they need to fulfill. Of course, you have to make sure that before you fulfill any objectives, Biff is not there, because Biff's going to be moving around the board, and if he's on that location, you've got to defeat him before you can complete the uh, event in that location. You also have to make sure you get rid of any paradox tokens that are on that location before you can defeat it. Next, you're going to advance the out-of-time marker. Now, you do this by uh, looking and seeing which timeline has the most events on it. However, events, however many events that has, you go ahead and you advance the out-of-time uh, track by that number. You want to keep that as, as, as low as possible. Now, if ever two Martys uh, end up in the exact same location, the exact same timeline, it does cause problems, and you have to move the out-of-time marker ahead uh, several spaces. So you're going around and around, you're trying to defeat these uh, uh, events, you're trying to solve these events using your die, and you're critically you're trying to return those items to their respective uh, piles. And uh, once you have completed that and returned all of the items to their respective piles, then you win Back to the Future Dice Through Time. So Back to the Future Dice Through Time. Um, I played a lot of Back to the Future games. Um, like, okay, three. Uh, <laughs> and... You know, they're, um, to me, it's always a game that is hard to... It's hard to get the time travel right. It's hard to make this game 
really work thematically. Um, this theme work theme work as a game thematically. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it's it's just kind of wonky. It's just kind of all over the place. Um, and and it's hard to nail down. I played one a few years ago that was that was just really weak. It was it it it, it was not nearly as clever as as it it thought it was trying to be. And I, you know, and I felt bad because I think it's such a great theme, and I love the movies. You know, I'm a child of the '80s. I absolutely love the movies. But I felt bad because these these games just kind of aren't living up to the potential. Um, this one's from Ravensburger, and I was kind of interested in it. And it's funny because Ravensburger does all those Prospero Hall games, but I know Prospero Hall's got a Back to the Future game, and I haven't played that one. Um, but I was interested in this one because I, I do. I'm always hoping one's just going to be an amazing Back to the Future game. And I'll tell you right now, I really like this game. My friends and I had fun with it. It was a fun game. It's a really light game. It's a fairly quick game. But it's still it's, it, it's fun, and it's a puzzle game. But I do have some criticisms with this game. And the first one is... Um, it's, it's, uh, we beat it the first time we played it. It's a cooperative game, and I don't like cooperative games that I beat on the first game. I don't like cooperative games that are too easy, and I think this game is. Now, as I mentioned, when you're pulling those, those cards out of the event deck, a lot of them are, um, a lot of them you know, are, are things that kind of just generally throw a monkey wrench in your plans or help you. And it just seems like the ones that help you make it too easy. I mean, the, the out of time marker rarely got to where we were really felt threatened by it. And, and so it, it, it's easier, I think, than it needs to be. And the second criticism I have is that this is a really easy game for the alpha gamer. It's a real easy game for one person to kind of tell everybody else what to do, you know? And that's always a problem in a cooperative game. And we kind of, my friends and I kind of came up with an idea that we think fixes both those problems. And that is, if you had some kind of a player screen and you couldn't tell the other players what your dice were, and so you roll them and you're trying to do the best you can, and you can make general statements, but you can't say specifically what die you've got and what you're doing, that would kind of eliminate the alpha gamer problem and it would make things much more difficult but not impossible I haven't played it like that we we're just musing about it but I think that would probably solve that issue uh, I really liked this game I really liked um, a lot about it for as light as it was I think it's a good game I think maybe for 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 families and even I would almost venture to call this kind of a gateway game into 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 the, these kinds of games into hobby gaming um, but it, it didn't blow me away, but it was fun. I did enjoy it. So I'm going to say if you're looking for like a fun, light, cooperative game uh, that's got a great theme and, and you know brings back fun memories of the movies and stuff, I think you're going to enjoy this one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to recommend buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I like everybody else, wear a mask when I'm, in, uh, when I'm inside, when I'm near other people. I always wear a mask. And i got to tell you, I don't do it so much for the health concerns as I do it because I like to feel like I'm a member of COBRA! Probably, probably the nicest face paint that George has ever gotten, and that's saying something.